the audio in which y'all about to hear is pretty old audio, but it's very interesting that it's circling its wagons back around years later. I'm going to play it in this actually an interview that Piers Morgan did. This is back when Piers Morgan was on CNN. So that's how you notice this old and Joe Jackson was still alive because Joe Jackson is still there. And it's some other guy sitting next to Joe Jackson. I'm guessing maybe it's someone from his estate or maybe an attorney, but I think it's someone from his estate. I'm going to go ahead and play it. It's 59 seconds. I'm discussing with you, I think, uh, about a plan to buy Marvel, the comic business, back in 2001 or two, I think it was. Let's listen to this. We could easily go into Universal and buy it. We would own Jaws, E.T., Close Encounters, you know, all the classics from, the, from, from the Universal, own all of that stuff. That would allow us to do a Universal, I mean, a channel. Part of the Marvel channel can be not only the Marvel characters, but Marvel films like the catalog. We could do anything we want from restaurants to, to retail, theme parks. Now, you actually got the financing in place, I believe, for this deal. Then came the, the scandal court cases, and it all got put on the back burner. Disney ended up buying Marvel and doing exactly what Michael had predicted and making a fortune at it. Tell me. All right, so that's the whole clip right there. Like I said, it's only 59 seconds. I'm sure it's more. It's definitely more to it. And you know what? I'm not surprised by this. I'm not surprised that Michael... And his team were preparing to buy Marvel, nor am I surprised by what they did in order to stop him from getting Marvel. Because you got to think, at that time, Michael had owned half of Sony's publishing. I think he had like around 51%, which of course is over half. Where he owned the publishing of not only his music, but also any music for any artist that came through the doors and signed a contract with Sony. He owned the publishing rights to their music. So Michael Jackson had a lot of money. To say that this man didn't have no money when he died would be a flat out lie. Like this man is like still one of the top earners in music. And this man has been dead since 2009. I remember back in the 90s, early 90s, I think Michael Jackson had said, I don't know if he was being serious or not, that he wanted to be Spider-Man in like a Spider-Man film. This was before the Tobey Maguire uh, Spider-Man that came out in 2002, which ironically, the voicemail that y'all just heard was from 2002. So that was right when the first Spider-Man movie came out. I don't know if this voicemail was before that Spider-Man came out or after, but we know Spider-Man, the first one, with Tobey Maguire, came out the same year that this voicemail that y'all just heard from him came from. And he was basically, and listen to the confidence in his voice. He's saying, we could go up in there and we could buy Universal. Like he said, they have the, they had the money. Michael Jackson and his team had the money to just go up in there and say, look, we want to buy this and we want to buy that. Here's the, the contract. We looked over everything. Boom, here you go. Give me the keys to the kingdom. And that was it. But listen, you heard the plans in which he had for what he was going to do when he bought Marvel. He said there was going to be theme parks. There's going to be a cinematic universe. There's going to be a whole bunch of stuff that goes along with it. Now, fast forward to years later. When now that Disney has acquired Marvel. And what do they have? A cinematic universe theme parks, and all the other stuff that Michael Jackson had planned. So it makes you wonder, and I'm putting on my tinfoil do-rag, was Disney, did, when, after these allegations came out, which hindered them, him actually being successful in buying this, because they said he would have did it. They, he would have been able to buy it flat out with no problem. I wonder if Disney got a hold of this voicemail and said, oh, we got to do this. This is a good idea. Let's go ahead and do this. Because it's no coincidence to me that Michael Jackson in 2002 said he wanted to do all these things with Marvel had he were able to acquire it and almost did. Then these allegations kick up and he can't do it anymore. And then fast forward over a about a decade so around later 
because the Marvel Cinematic Universe didn't really come into its own until around the first Avengers movie. So you're talking about after the first Iron Man movie, after the first Thor movie, and the first Captain America movie. Then that's when it started to come into, start to take shape and become what is now known as the MCU. So you're talking about around 2012. So you're talking about a decade later, Disney comes up with the same thing. Hmm. I don't think, I, I, I said coincidence, I think not. Could you imagine if Michael Jackson owned Marvel? How that would be? And then on top of that, you got to think, this man had Neverland. He had a whole theme park at his house. That just shows you right there that he already had the plan set in motion since day one. See what he did with his own theme park. Imagine what he would have done if he had his own Marvel world. I don't know what he would have called it. And created a theme park just around Marvel. It would have been so dope. To not only go and see some of your favorite comic book characters, but to know it's owned by the greatest entertainer that ever lived. Like, that's like getting two for the price of one. But this also speaks to another more serious discussion of when black entertainers or entrepreneurs try to acquire something and then something, quote unquote, happens and then it just gets all shut down. So you have this situation right here. You have Bill Cosby when he tried to acquire Universal, uh, well, not well, NBC, I should say. And then, you know, his son gets murdered and he still to this day, as far as I know, have never captured the killer. And then all these other allegations with Bill Cosby pops up. And then uh, the word on the street is with R. Kelly is that, you know, he apparently his publishing like this man's publishing is worth damn near a billion dollars. And the reason why he got him up the way that he did, besides what he actually got himself involved with leading up to this, but all this extra stuff is because they want his catalog. That's the word on the street. That's not my personal take, but that's just what has been said. But when you think about it in hindsight, yeah, it might be look at Prince. Like another example. And so many more. Shoot, this goes all the way back, all the way back in time to the 60s. When you had Sam Cooke, one of the first black artists to own his masters. And the minute he gets his masters and he's trying to tell other people how to get it and to get it. Boom, what happens? He ends up murdered. Shot to death. In his prime. I'm just saying the industry is very, very wicked. But man, just thinking about this and what could have been like, could you imagine what it have been like if Michael Jackson on Marvel? That would have been uh, an interesting sight to see. I'm sure it would have attracted a lot of tourists and everything like that. And it, it, it also makes you wonder what that MCU or whatever he would have called it, because who knows what he would have actually called it. We don't know if it would have been called MCU, what his universe would have looked like, what he would he have done with this intellectual property known as marvel especially since marvel right now as far as the mcu goes is kind of i'm not gonna say on the decline but it's at a stumbling block a stumbling block right now in case y'all have not heard you know ant-man and the wasp quantumania was a flop they're pushing back so many dates on so many things right now not a good way to kick off your phase five in my honest opinion but you know that's that, that's something they got to handle. I can't, you know, it is what it is. But man, can y'all, t- I want to know from y'all, could y'all imagine, what would, you, what would have been like for y'all to know, you know, what w- is going through your mind if this is your first time ever hearing this audio or this information of Michael Jackson wanting to own Marvel and almost coming close to doing so? What What is your take on it? What do you think a Marvel Cinematic Universe would have looked like if Michael Jackson was at the head of it? Or what do you think a theme park that Michael Jackson created centered around Marvel would have looked like, and would you have gone? I'm telling you right now, I don't care where the hell it was located. If it was in somewhere in California, I would have flew there just to go there to say that I went. That's just me. I personally have said that they should have turned Neverland into a museum. I'm going to stand firmly on that. There's a lot of people that agree. I truly believe that they should have turned Neverland into a museum and kept the rides there and turned it into a theme park. They could have had a museum and a theme park. I wish that was something the state could have did, but I think because it got tainted 
because of what they did to Michael, he 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 felt like that place wasn't he in in so many words he was saying how it it wasn't it wasn't his haven anymore. It became tainted, it became too open. And not in the sense of him inviting people in, but it's because when the people came there to investigate, to search for anything to incriminate him, even though they found nothing, he said it wasn't home anymore. So, you know, it is what it is. I'm sure if the circumstances were different and, you know, you know, if he was to pass away around the same time as he did and none of that stuff happened, he probably would have had a little bit of a different take on it as far as turning it into a museum, like maybe some last dying wishes to say, keep the legacy of Neverland going, turn it into a museum of my thing. So people around the world can come and at least experience what it's like to be in my home, even though physically I'm not there and also keep the rides around and expand on it and turn it into a theme park. Man, could you imagine how much money the estate would have got from that alone? I keep thinking about that play out in my head all the time, but I'm not in a position to make that move because I'm not on his estate, on his estate board. And I'm sure that's something that's been coming up. And I'm sure that's been something that was heavily suggested for such a long, long, long time. But I don't think it will ever happen unless maybe his kids find a way to make it happen. I think they might be the last resort is if his kids do something. But. We'll see. But yeah, this is a very interesting find right here. Just in case anybody didn't know. Yes, Michael Jackson almost owned Marvel. I I know that's a very interesting situation right there. But we know why now, why he doesn't. Clearly because one, because he's deceased. But besides that, when those allegations kicked back up, this deal fell through. Like he, he was that close to getting it. And then what happened? Like I said, I don't, it's not a coincidence that that's how it played out that way. And so many other people, especially a lot of black people who are trying to own their stuff or try to get ownership of something or some kind of entrepreneurial spirit about themselves, that this kind of stuff kicks off the way that it does.